Hello friends, welcome to Olive Board. I hope you're all doing well and your exam preparations are going good too. In this video, we will be covering the part 2 for the computer awareness. But before we get started, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel for latest videos. For those of you who are preparing for IBPS PO 2018 examination, Oliveboard has brought to you free live online course. Herein, we will be having daily live classes, daily live doubt clearing sessions, live practice sessions, and we will also be providing you with free concept videos. The classes starts tomorrow, that is 4th of September, and will last till 12th October 2018. And the whole course for this IBPS PO is absolutely free. All you need to do is sign up to our OliveBot website and stay tuned to OliveBot to never miss any video from us. This video is second part for the series of computer awareness. Herein we will be covering parts of a computer system, the data processing cycle, the central processing unit, computer memory, memory storage units and we will also be discussing some important MCQs. Let's start with the parts of a computer system. So when we see computer system as a whole, it consists of four parts that is hardware, software, data and users. So we'll start with hardware. What is a hardware? It represents the physical and tangible components of the computer. So when we say physical and tangible, it means that we should be able to touch it or feel it. For example, keyboard, mouse, monitor, etc. They all comprise of the hardware in the computer system. Now, when we talk about software, it is a set of electronic instructions called programs. So programs are the electronic uh, instructions that make the computer perform tasks. So when we want the computer to calculate on our behalf, it does that because it has some data stored in it in the form of programs. Third thing is data. So data is the raw facts which the computer stores and reads in the form of numbers. So the numbers are 0 and 1 as we know it. So the data is the raw fact which is stored in the computer already. And fourth is users. So the people who make use of the computer to obtain certain results or outcomes like us. So we are called the users. The data processing cycle of a computer consists of three steps. First is the input, second is processing and third is output. So when we feed in details or commands given by the user is taken by the computer, it gets processed and then whatever is the outcome comes out in the form of output. So input is the step in which the command is given by the user and carried out by the computer. Thus, this step produces a more useful form of data at the end. Second step is the processing wherein the commands given by the user to the computer using input devices like mouse, keyboard, etc. And output is the result of the processing that is stored and displayed to the user by means of output devices like monitor, printer, etc. is called output. CPU or central processing unit. So three things together or collectively are called the central processing unit. These are the control unit, the arithmetic and logical unit and the memory. So together these things collectively are called the central processing unit. Now earlier CPUs were composed of many separate components but since 1970s or the fifth generation of computers it has been typically constructed on a single integrated circuit which is called microprocessor. This we discussed in part one series already. So when we talk about control unit it manages the computer's various components it reads and interprets that is it decodes the program instructions and transforming them to control signals that activate other parts of the computer so when we for example give an instruction for a print to our computer it has to carry out certain activities like so the control unit takes care of that 
second thing is arithmetic and logical unit it performs two classes of operations so first is the arithmetic and second is the logical unit a set of arithmetic operations that an arithmetic arithmetic and logical unit supports may be limited to either addition or subtraction or can be of more complex nature also but when we talk about logic operations it involves boolean logic for example and or not etc these can be useful for creating complicated conditional statements and processing the boolean logic also the memory of the computer comes from two principal varieties that is primary memory and secondary memory so there is a difference between the primary memory and secondary memory which we will be discussing now so we start with the primary memory primary memory holds only those data or instructions on which the computer is currently working so for example if we are reading a pdf or if we are creating a video so only that particular thing that we are doing in the computer the primary memory looks after but other things like we use facebook right on our desktop sometimes so that is not if it is not in use right now it will not be taken care of by the primary memory it has limited capacity and data is lost when power is switched off so just in case we've not saved something that we are doing and our uh, laptop or personal computer gets dis uh, discharged in that case all that we were working on gets lost it is generally made up of semiconductor device it is known as the main memory as computer cannot function without it so primary memory is a must for the computer to function and it is also volatile in nature the two types of primary memory consists of ram and rom which is random access memory and read only memory let us first know what random access memory is so ram is the internal memory of the central processing unit and it helps in storing data program and the program result also it is either a read or write memory which stores data till the machine is working so as we said since it is a part of primary memory if our computer gets discharged in that case things cannot be stored so some types of random access memories are dram sram and sdram so dram stands for dynamic random access memory here in the term dynamic indicates that the memory must be constantly refreshed or it loses its content this type of memory is more economical so when we see since the data need not be stored it is very economical in nature for us to use but if we don't refresh it the data loses so we know there's no security then came the static random access memory here in the memory is faster and less volatile when compared to dynamic random access memory but it requires more part and is more expensive the term static is derived from the fact that it need not be refreshed like dram the third is synchronous dynamic random access memory so this is a type of dynamic random access memory that can run at a much higher speed next comes read only memory or rom so read only memory is a type of storage medium that permanently stores data on personal computers and other electronic devices now this consists of the programming which is needed to start a computer so for example we have windows in our computer now we require something that is more permanent in nature for which rom is used and uh, programs which are essential for the boot up it performs major input or output tasks and also holds programs or software instructions now because rom is read only it cannot be changed or in case it is a uh, able to change it can be modified very slowly hence whatever is mentioned here is permanent and non volatile in nature therefore uh, it holds its memory even when the power is removed so just in case our system gets uh, switched off the memory still retains uh, its uh, memory it is lost when uh, ram when we talk about ram the memory is lost when the power is removed so rom can be modified but very slowly and with a lot of difficulty so it is mainly used to so, uh, store firmware or firmware now firmware is the software that is closely tied to specific hardware and unlike to need 
frequent updates or application software and plugin cartridges so something that need not be changed or is permanent in nature is stored under rom the types of read only memory are first masked rom the very first roms were hardwired devices that contained a pre programmed set of data or instructions so these kinds of data which were pre programmed in nature were called masked rom the second is prom which is programmable read only memory now this can be modified only once by a user so whatever data is stored in this can be modified by only one time the user buys a blank prom and enters the desired contents using a prom program the third is ep rom which is erasable and programmable read only memory so this can be ero uh, erased by exposing it to uv lights which is ultraviolet lights for a duration of up to 40 minutes usually ep rom eraser achieves this function now the fourth one is wep rom which is electrically erasable and programmable read only memory this is programmed and erased electrically it can be erased and reprogrammed about 10000 times and both the functions that is erasing and programming take about 4 to 10 milliseconds only Now when we talk about secondary memory here the programs and data can be stored for a long term basis so when we talk about hard disk pen drives optical discs etc they all fall under the secondary memory then we have cache memory so cache memory is very high speed semiconductor memory which can speed up the central processing unit it acts as a buffer between the central processing unit and the main memory for example register memory storage units now this is very important often we talk about when we buy our phones we want to know how, what is the memory of our phone right but we don't know what bit nibble byte or word is here in we will discuss that so first unit is called bit which is binary digit now this binary digit is logical zero or one which represents a passive or an active state of a component in an electric circuit so it is the smallest unit called bit second is nibble so a group of four bits together is called nibble third is byte a group of eight bits are together called a byte a byte is the smallest unit which can represent a data item or a character so byte is how we know like when we download a file which is 8 1 uh, 8.3 mb or something like that so we know like byte is the main function then comes word so a computer word like a byte is a group of fixed number of bits processed as a unit which varies from computer to computer but is fixed for each computer so it may differ between two computers or two laptops but within a computer it will be same the length of a computer word is called word size or word length and it may be as small as 8 bits or maybe as long as 96 bits a computer stores the information in the form of computer words only now we will discuss some important mcqs from exams perspective the first is which of the following displays the content of the active cell in an ms excel the options are name box status box status bar formula bar or task bar so here in when we are uh, talking about ms excel the correct answer is c that is formula bar so the formula bar displays the content of the active cell in the excel the next question is the access method used for magnetic tape is so the access method is either direct indirect random or sequential here the correct answer is d sequential the next question which of the following holds the rom cpu and ram first cpu second hard drive third monitor or fourth mother motherboard here the correct answer is d motherboard next question ethernet uses which of the following topologies star topology tree topology ring topology or bus topology so when we talk about ethernet the bus topology is the correct answer 
a large number of computers in a wide geographical area can be efficiently connected by so here understand that there are a lot of computers and they are distributed geographically i mean the distance between these computers is wide so here the options are coaxial cables communication satellite usb cables or wan cables so here the correct answer is b communication satellites the next question the errors that can be pointed out by the compiler are called a logical errors b syntax errors c semantic errors or d memory allocation errors the correct answer is b syntax errors which cable connects a cable modem to a wireless router cat5 none of these hdmi or vga here in the correct answer is cat5 next question which key is used to rename a file so the options are function 2 5 12 or 7 here in the correct answer is f2 by using this you can rename the file you are working upon which key is used to switch between open programs first alt plus home alt plus shift alt plus control or alt plus tab so here the correct answer is d alt plus tab the shift plus function 10 key combination is used to a to select the first subfolder to close the console to display help or to display the shortcut menu for the selected item so the correct answer is d to display the shortcut menu for the selected item that's all we have for you in this video i hope you like the video please do share it with your friends to enhance their knowledge and stay tuned to olive board to not miss any video from us thank you